So today I'm going to do a pancake recipe. Now, I know there are loads of pancake recipes out there, but this is not your typical pancake recipe. So I find myself, if I'm rushing and racing, if I'm having a busy day, if I'm tired, I need carbohydrates, I need more energy. If I'm out on the bike and I need more fueling, but I don't just want to go for something sweet, these can be something savory that I can have on the bike that I can pull out of a pocket, I can have them in a paper sandwich bag or cut into strips that I can put in my pocket at the front of my bike and I can be eating them easily. Now, they're also going to have added moisture because we're adding in some, uh, some fruit uh, and you'll see what I mean by that in a minute, but it gives the most amazing flavor. And in essence, no matter what you're doing in your day, if you find you need something to help you feel satisfied but you need for that thing not to be a bar of chocolate, you need for it to give you some nutrition. Uh, this has, it just has everything, lots of eggs in it. If you're not getting enough protein in on a day-to-day -day basis, um, if you find that you just don't have time to cook the meat, or if you're not a meat eater and you're struggling to get in enough protein on a vegetarian or a vegan diet, um, I, use, I use this protein powder just because it's flavorless and it's easy to integrate into any recipes that I need to use it in. So I'm gonna put a spoon of that into this mix. You can leave it out if you want to. If you don't use protein powders, you can leave it well out. I'm always the advocate for food first, but if you do struggle to get enough protein in your day and recovery, healing, uh, nutrition, if they're the real important things to you, which they should be, uh, it's, it's handy just to have something to be able to add in there. So I'm using wheat flour. I'm going to use some uh, oats and they're going to be the basis for these pancakes. So the other thing I'm using is four eggs um, and these are organic eggs. Okay, first thing we're going to do is pop our four organic eggs into the mix. Now we'll see. I I'm not inclined to, to measure uh, ingredients like this, so I usually just have a look at it based on texture. And depending on what kind of thickness you want for your pancakes, uh, that's going to dictate how much milk you add, how much flour you add. Basically, if I use uh, four eggs, I usually use in and around three to four cups of flour. And then depending on what mix I'm using, uh, I'll add a varying amount of milk. So let's get started. So I better measure this for you. So to make crepes with three cups of flour, I'm going to add in three cups of milk here. I will need more, but we'll see how we go. Really not advised if one of your uh, mixers is snapped, but uh, we'll try to we'll try to limit the mess that's going on around here now. So I've added four cups of milk into my four eggs, and now I'm going to add two and a half, maybe three cups of flour, and then we'll mix. Okay, I haven't created too much of a mess, but I'm going to show you the texture of this now. So it's quite liquid, but it's very thick. Okay, so this is going to be perfect for crepes. Now, if you find that they're turning out too thick at all, just add another small drop of milk and that will just allow the mixture to spread a little bit farther um, and be paper thin. So it depends really how you like the texture of your pancakes and it's different for everybody. So I'm going to go and get some of these crepes on now and then I'm going to add in the rest of the mixture. I've put just a little bit of butter into the pan. You all know how to make crepes, I'm sure. I don't need to go through the details with you. I'm gonna put uh, one crepe on now and then I'm gonna come back and show you how to make this fruit compote. Uh, when I was at a yoga retreat with Jeannie Dianti from Alchemy School of Yoga uh, last year, started 2019, 
um, Superfood Company did the most amazing meals for us and one of the things they uh, did and they sent me the recipe afterwards was to make this amazing berry compote and you can either make it with star anise or with something like elderflower or whatever you prefer uh, and I'm going to show you how to make that as well today. Okay so while we're waiting for that to cook I'm going to show you here I have two full cups of mixed berries here they're frozen berries and it, don't be afraid to buy frozen fruit or frozen berries because generally what happens is they're picked and immediately once they're picked they go straight through to storage where they're washed and where they're frozen straight away so the wonderful thing about these is that they haven't been sitting out in heat for long periods of time so the vitamin and mineral content hasn't been allowed to degrade so don't be afraid to buy a mixed or frozen fruit or frozen berries at all so what I'm going to do here there's no water in this but as you start to cook them they do release quite a lot of water so I'm only going to put a very very small bit of water in here uh, we'll say in fact we're measuring tablespoons so you know how much so two cups of mixed berries and we'll see here one two let's call it let's call it four tablespoons of water okay now i'm also going to add some honey here if the berries are a bit sharp it's nice to have an element of sweetness you could choose to use maple syrup if you prefer i just love the flavor of honey and the richness of it so i'm going to use one big teaspoon again if you want to go all out add another teaspoon which i'll probably do in fact sure you lose you lose half a teaspoon on the back of the on the back of the spoon anyway okay so once we have that all in place i am then going to pop it on the heat but as i said you can flavor this so um elderflower, elderflower cordial is readily available in shops especially at this time of year you can get organic you can get freshly made elderflower cordial or now i, I do enjoy it but i really really love these with star anise and it's more of a kind of a winter flavoring i guess but uh, the flavor is just out of this world so i'm going to add a couple of star anise to this when i say a couple i'm going to stick in i'm going to stick in four actually um because it's just so young and make sure they get into the wet parts of the pot so that they just diffuse their flavor through the mix okay all i'm going to do now is put that on a low heat and allow it to simmer while we're making the rest of our food and uh, the juice is just released from the fruit and they kind of tend to fall apart a little bit always take count of the star anise because we're going to fish those out in a minute and then we're going to whiz it up i prefer a smoother compote other people prefer to have lumps of berries in there but because i want to add these to our small um, pancakes in a minute i want a smoother uh, texture so i'm going to put those on now And the second they start bubbling a little bit we're going to take them off the heat and just put them on a low heat and allow them to simmer with a cover on now I also need to flip that pancake Oops. okay that's bubbling already We're turning it down and covering it okay so i'm going to keep some of this aside just a moment So I'm keeping six scoops of that aside for um, for the pancakes for the small fella because as I said he prefers those uh, smooth pancakes, the, the crepes. Okay so now as I showed you a while ago this texture, the texture of this is quite uh, runny which is what we need it for when we're making crepes. Um, so it's quite watery. So we're not going to need any more milk here. 
And what we're actually going to do is add more flour now. I'm going to go on half cups. Bring this over so I don't make a mess. And we're just going to monitor our texture as we go. And I'm just going to add one more half cup of flour there. Now it's important to note, depending on the flour you're using, whether it's creamed flour, plain flour, you may need more liquid, you may need less liquid. And that's why I keep talking about texture and how important it is to monitor your texture. I'm just going to check the pancake here. Okay, so while that's going there, we'll do our second half scoop. Okay, this texture is perfect. I'm gonna show it to you now. So it's rather thick, okay? And when you spread it on your mix, you can actually see the shape retain on the top of the mix. Now what I'm also going to add here is a heaped teaspoon of baking powder because we want to get that rise in the pancakes. When I say heaped, you need it because you're going to be adding uh, the oats as well. And try to spread out that mix evenly. If I was a chef, I might have sifted that in with the flour, but I'm not. Okay, so we don't need these anymore. Now, what I would usually do when I'm making pancakes is I would add a vanilla essence to the mix, but because you may decide to use these pancakes uh, for a savoury meal, you can keep them in the fridge. You can sprinkle a bit of sea salt on them, have them with anything, have them as, instead of slices of bread, you can have them um, with hummus on top. So if you're going to keep them as savoury, don't add the vanilla to them. If you can't even envisage using them as a savoury snack, uh, use your vanilla away in the mix if you like. Now here is where we would put in the uh, protein powder as well if you wanted it. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a tablespoon. Again it's just to increase the protein intake very slightly. If you wanted to here you could add two or three tablespoons or you could add half a cup of protein powder in lieu of um, half a cup of the flour to really boost that protein content of these. Again, if you're struggling to um, keep your protein content up. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on top. And now I'm going to add in a cup of oats. So this is a half cup measure and I'm adding in heat. Just going to mix those oats in. So this looks like a really nice thick dough and I'm really looking forward to these for my lunch. But these are perfect to just grab out of the fridge and you can have them cold if you wish. Now I'm going to leave half of them plain without fruit in them but the other half we're going to add the fruit mix to. So this is the texture. Okay, now uh, what I've just realized is that I've used um, strong flour and strong flour you would usually use for breads. So they may seem a little bit more uh, thick than they might be usually, um, but that's okay. Any flour will do and it might change the texture minimally, but it won't cause any problems. Okay. Okay, I have two very happy bunnies over there now eating their crepes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and fish the star anise out of those, um, out of that mix. And we are going to just give it a whiz and add it to some, not all, of the mix, the pancake mix. Okay, two. 
Now, sometimes with the star anise, little branches of it fall off or little arms of it. If it does, ah, here's one. If it does, they're very, very small. Don't worry, they go quite soft and uh, they generally tend to get mixed up um, with the mixer anyway. So I'm just going to give this a whiz now. Okay, so I have my mix here. So it's uh, quite syrupy. There's still some small bits in it, but that's fine. It was just really the strawberries, the big lumpy bits that I wanted to get out of it. Now I am going to take some of this into a smaller bowl so that you can see what it's like when I add. So you see how thick this mix is. All right. So we'll just take this much and scoop it in. Okay. So we have about half of our mix there and we're just going to put in maybe a good bit. We'll put in two thirds of that mix and we'll just mix it through. Now you might decide not to mix this through at all, which is completely fine. You can have it as a dip or, in, or drizzled over the pancakes and we'll do both. I'll show you both. But it creates the most amazing color in these pancakes as well. So I've put a little bit of butter in the pan, which is just melted there. And I'm going to use this big pasta spoon to just make small rounds of this. And I'll bring over the camera and show you in just a moment. So it's a good idea to cook these on just a medium heat. What you don't want to happen is that the underside burns and gets too brown, but the inside still stays doughy. You want to give it enough heat underneath that it just starts to go golden, but it allows the mix to rise and it allows it to cook through. So that's an important one. guys are nearly ready. Now what I love to do is I love to have these with a dollop of Greek yogurt, uh, mint yogurt, a higher protein yogurt or just your regular Glenisk vanilla yogurt is beautiful. So I'm going to see if I have any. Okay I don't have any of those but what I do have is some vanilla yogurt from the Coconut Collaborative. Uh, I use this for my smoothies because it's a really really nice texture and a beautiful flavor. Okay, so I have just finished batch number one. What I am going to do is put a dollop of vanilla yogurt on top, drizzle with some of, even though it's inside them as well, I'm gonna drizzle with some of my fruit compote And if you really want to go all out, if you've just done a big cycle and you're seriously needing those carbs, you can add some honey. So breakfast for me today, these are lunch and you can have them any time of the day. You can make smaller ones to have a snack with a cup of tea. You can make larger ones to pile high with fruit or with berries or whatever you like. So enjoy and I hope you've enjoyed this recipe and you will use it.